Hello, good people. Welcome back to the Cub Games YouTube channel. My name is Evan, and we play Goats here. Um, we are here with round three of GFC 22. Um, we're playing against Patrick Zero, who is uh, very well known for being a Goat Control player, so expected a tough matchup uh, right off the bat in this one. But um, I don't think the control matchups are as bad um, as most people make them out to be. Um, it's, it's totally winnable. Uh, we actually have a decent hand here. Uh, tribe really good in this matchup for a lot of reasons. It's good against the scapegoats. It's good against thousand eyes restrict. Um, stuff like that. Uh, double blade knight. Not great. I actually end up siding out two blade knights in this matchup. Usually, um, they don't, they play like fewer flips than, uh, chaos turbo. Um, and Obviously, you know, Blade Knight's not attacking in through uh, Scapegoats. It's useless against Thousand Eyes Restrict, stuff like that. So, hand's okay. Um, I'm certainly not going to complain about it. Um, I decide to not set the Solemn Judgment. Uh, I don't really want to um, protect my ring uh, by having to Solemn a Heavy here. Uh, especially with that putting me down to 4,000. Uh, then ring becomes, you know, a little bit worse. So I really want to be able to use my ring first and then just have the Solemn Judgment a little later, but I am going to throw out the Blade Knight. Uh, Turbo does have some monsters that could threaten the Blade Knight on turn one. Not Turbo. Um, Go Control does have some monsters that can threaten the Blade Knight turn one, but I do have this ring uh, to sort of protect it. So opponent's going to lead on an upstart into Pot of Greed. Okay. Into upstart. Um, so we're already behind a little bit, but that's fine. We've, <laughs> we've played a lot of these games from behind. So, um, opponent does have the scapegoat here. So we're just going to kill one of the goat tokens. Um, didn't want to summon blade nine into potential torrential tribute or something, but now I will. Um, cause if they want to kill the goats, you know, it's kind of like a one for one. Um, we are going to set this whole back row here. So we have a call of the haunted. We set the Rota. Um, generally I'm not a huge fan of doing this, but this does play around a uh, delinquent duo, uh, the best here. And, um, I kind of don't want my opponent to sort of like snipe the call of the haunted here. Cause I think this may, <clears throat> this may be a good one. Um, now the opponent does have heavy storm. Um, and we saw him judgment, but, Follows up with a Graceful Charity, so um, Pot of Greed, Graceful, with uh, Sinister Servant here. So, not good for us. Also, the Metamorphosis for the Thousand Eyes Restrict. Um, of course, we do have the Ring of Destruction to take care of that, so no big deal there. Uh, but there is a second Metamorphosis, and we can't do anything about this one right now. So, Thousand Eyes Restrict is going to hit the board... Um, which means uh, if my opponent decides to attack, can't crash with the Blade Knight. Um, decides not to attack, which I understand. Uh, we draw Heavy Storm, um, which is interesting because the opponent has three back rows. Uh, obviously, you can't use a scapegoat. Um, I guess they only have two back rows. This Blade Knight is not really a back row. But um, we can, what we can do is we can clear the way to make sure that our tribe is going to be able to kill this Thousand Eyes Restrict. Um, but we go ahead and we get Exiled Force. So we, yeah, so we don't actually have to use the tribe, uh, which I like quite a bit here. And we can just throw that out without um, dropping the heavy and losing our Call of the Haunted. Uh, Exiled Force also works with the Call of the Haunted here, so I do like that play. Um, we get, just get another use out of the Exiled Force. We can actually pop this face down monster if we want to. Um, I elect to just attack him with the Blade Knight, which also makes sense, um, because Blade Knight can clean up, uh, any flip effect monster, just like, um, activating the Exile Force here. This plays around Sangan a little better, um, doesn't play around Spy, uh, but I think that's fine. The opponent's likely not going to have any battle traps, so the attack is likely to go through. Um, opponent is going to go grab a Sukuyomi, which, uh, of course, bad news for me. Uh, I don't have an answer to that right now, <laughs> but whew, uh, opponent has the third metamorphosis here to go grab uh, the Thousand Eyes Restrict. Um, this is actually not the worst. Again, we do have this Call of the Haunted for Exiled Force. We also have this tribe here if we want to utilize that. Um, 
draw a rota, which kind of sucks. Um, we don't really have a whole lot that we want to be able to grab here. Um, so we are just going to get the Exiled Force. Um, pop the Styles and Eyes Restrict. So that's gone. Um, do we know the card? Yeah, we know the Tsukuyomi in my opponent's hand. So, I mean, what do you, what do, you do here? You can't really play around the Tsukuyomi. So do you want to uh, get aggressive and start attacking? And just have the monsters picked off one by one? I don't think so. But yeah, I'm going to Heavy Storm here. Um, Call of the Haunted for the Sangan is going to get a DD Warrior Lady, which puts me even farther behind. Uh, I am going to get a Blade Knight, so I am going to start attacking here. I guess my thought process is um, I need to at least attack this face down because if it's a Magician of Faith, and we do see it is one, um, that could be very, very bad for me. It'd potentially just game ending because the opponent has Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed in the graveyard. So I do... I do like the play of at least get the Blade Knight and attack the face down monster, um, but maybe not extend past that. Um, of course, we'll see what happens um, in future turns here to determine whether we need to just keep playing into the Tsukuyomi. Um, opponent doesn't have any back row. We draw a Kaiku. I'm going to summon the Kaiku. Um, so now I've made the decision, you know, I have monster after monster. Maybe I can just chain some off the top of the deck if the opponent's not going to um, have any back row or any interaction against me, uh, then this is perfectly okay. Maybe we can just, you know, uh, rip a BLS or something off the top because this Kaiku does give us a dark. Um, and maybe that's our, that's our way to actually win the game. Um, I do take, I think all of the lights. Yeah, we take all the lights out of the graveyard, um, which is nice. Obviously this Kaiku stops the opponent from summoning uh, a BLS right now, but they do have the Tsukuyomi and that's going to kill the Kaiku. Opponent's going to set a back row. Let's see if we can draw some more monsters. Draw Torrential, which is fine. Um, I am just going to opt to set that and sort of change up the game plan a little. Um, since we know the Tsukuyomi's there, um, the tribe could have a little bit more value later. So, um, There's this DD Warrior Lady that we are going to Torrential and opponent... <laughs> Punish is going to premature it back, so now like we're in a very, very bad position. We have this tribe to take care of the DD Warrior Lady, however, um, the Tsukuyomi is just going to clean it up, but I mean, there I don't really have a choice here. I just have to, just have to attack. Um, <laughs> opponent has another scapegoat, so yeah, I mean, just worst case scenario here, that's fine. Um, we were so far behind, I don't hate how we, don't hate how we played um, from behind, <laughs> Um, we do draw Pot of Greed here, which gives us some amount of life, but we draw a Dust Tornado Jar of Greed. Um, I am going to set both of them. The Tsukuyomi is not lethal here, so it's likely we don't die on this turn. Uh, but draw an MST, which obviously is not ideal, and we Jar of Greed and DD Warrior Lady, which can do something. Um, DD Warrior Lady doesn't get taken down by, uh, the Tsukuyomi, so that's nice. Uh, but we attack, and there's a Magician of Faith, so... We're going to get back to Graceful Charity. Um, no opponent has Sinister Serpent in hand. So uh, we were behind. Uh, we never really got caught up, and now we're even farther behind. Opponent has a Breaker, which um, doesn't really matter. Not, neither of my back row actually do anything. So um, this just clears my monster off the board while getting a plus one. Draw Nobleman of Cross Out, which obviously is dead here. Opponent gets back the Sinister Serpent. I uh, just kind of rub it in. My opponent actually sets another Magician of Faith, um, which makes the Nobleman live at least. I don't activate it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what my reasoning was for not activating the Nobleman there. That seems like a pretty um, cut and dry thing that I can do, I guess. Hmm. The, the only reasoning I can think of is I want to bluff that this is a trap that actually does something. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, at this point, I may have just been thinking about sideboarding and going to game two, honestly, because I knew the game was lost. Um, and I do think that's actually a perfectly fine thing to do if you're sort of in garbage time. Um... And you know that you know the game is lost. There's really like no way that you can possibly get back. I don't think it's bad to start thinking about sideboarding and game plan for game two. 
uh, which we will get into. So, weren't in that game a whole lot, but uh, like this hand. Um, Exile Forest goes hard here. Uh, always love seeing a King Tiger in the opening hand against the control decks, and of course Pot of Greed's fought Pot of Greed, so... Um, BLS is a little annoying here. It's not doing a whole lot right now, but we do draw into a trap dust shoot. So now we have King Tiger, um, and trap dust shoot to help protect it, which is nice. Uh, we are just going to flip it here. Opponent has a torrential, a scapegoat, a book of moon, a Jinzo, a magical merchant, and a snatch steel. So the snatch steel is not actually that bad because we have the heavy storm. Uh, the torrential, of course, we have the heavy storm for. Uh, scapegoat is turned off for now. Opponent could book the, um, the tiger and then flip it up. Uh, that would be a little annoying, but they would have to take the minus one on the book of moon if they wanted to do that. Uh, Jinzo, we don't actually have any traps right now. Magical merchant we have taken care of with exiled force. We actually do have this premature burial for the exiled force. So I think my play, yeah, my play is actually going to be to take the Jinzo. Um, and the reason for that is my opponent could snatch steal the King Tiger and then just sack it off for Jinzo. And even though I have an answer to the Jinzo, um, I just completely lose out on the King Tiger. My opponent has access to their scapegoat, their Book of Moon without minusing. Um, yeah, and so I just decide, you know, we're, we're going to send back the Jinzo because we, um, we don't want our opponent to just take everything we have essentially here. Go to my turn. I draw more Trinity which is nice. I am just going to lead on duo because I know there's no um, Sinister Serpent or anything there. Uh, we actually get the Snatch Steel and the Scapegoat, so this is either a Torrential Tribute or a Book of Moon. Um, with my opponent setting the Magical Marionette, of course, uh, that Magical Merchant, sorry, Magical Marionette is uh, not really a played card in Goat. Um, some Reasoning Gate players have played it, shout out to them. Uh, but since my opponent set the Magical Merchant, this is very likely to be a Book of Moon. Uh, we see here that it is. So I kind of play it as such. I'm just going to attack into it. Not even going to worry about um, playing the Exiled Force here. Um, if my opponent wants to get a card off of the Magical Merchant, just a random one, that's fine. Um, we can save the Exiled Force uh, for... Oh, wait. <laughs> I can't summon the Exiled Force. That's why I didn't. <laughs> the Exiled Force would die. So yeah, um, we're just going to attack into it. Um, and that's perfectly fine. I'm actually going to set the Exile Force, which I don't hate, because we know my opponent has Premature Burial, which can only get this Magical Merchant. Um, we know Book of Moon is likely the face-down card. Um, and then Torrential Tribute. So it actually lets me um, be able to flip that later, which I think is nice. Uh, we are going to set the Heavy Storm, because I would like my opponent to uh, set more back row here, and we actually do get the opponent to do that. Um, we actually He actually sets all three. Um, which is very nice. Uh, we know we know there's no judgment. Yeah, we don't know what this monster is right now. Uh, we know the other three cards. But now, of course, we flip Heavy Storm. Um, now we have the choice of do we flip the Exiled Force and activate, or do we summon Zaborg? Um, I think I like summoning Zaborg here because you hit your opponent for 4,100, um, and it's just a two-turn two clock. We can also just lead on Graceful Charity here and see if we can actually just win the game. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Pona sees a graceful charity and actually just concedes. So that's nice. Um, <clears throat> we were actually able to, um, out Trinity an opponent <laughs> for once this time. Um, so going into game three, I'm like, okay, um, we can beat control. Let's do this. Let's turn this tournament around a little bit. Let's see if we can get back in it. Um, open up a interesting hand uh snatch steel and magician of faith of course is good gravekeeper spy just a solid card exiled force is good uh, especially in conjunction with the call of the haunted so i'm not excited to see this hand um but i'm not totally upset by it either we do draw king tiger which of course best card in the matchup um i'm gonna lead on king tiger uh, the reasoning here like you could play the spy and try to get the value out of that first but spy's value is is a little less in this matchup um i i mostly cited in because it adds a little bit more of a dimension to the deck um you're not just uh slam big monster and attack um whereas i can summon this king tiger if it dies i have call of the haunted i can bring it back like in response to a scapegoat or something 
and I think that's really good. So I'm fine with just playing out the King Tiger here, uh, potentially losing a small bit of uh, advantage with the, the Gravekeeper Spy. Um, but, I mean, we can always just set the Spy later because this King Tiger is going to have a target on its back. Uh, we do lose the Call of the Haunted, so if the King Tiger dies here, which we're going to see the opponent does have a tribe affecting virus, means we're not going to be able to get it back, but that's fine. Um, unfortunately, the discard is a Sinister Serpent, so losing out a little bit on that. Um, don't really have a read on the opponent's back row. I don't, I would say, um, the back row is not a battle trap. Um, I believe the opponent, I guess with the tribe, maybe they do just take the 1700, but I'd say it's likely not a battle trap. You can save your tribe a little bit later, um, to get a little bit more value out of it. So we are just going to row to here. We're going to grab the Sasuke because it can attack over the tribe. Um, and again, we're sort of reading that there's no battle trap there. We're just going to attack over it. No need to throw off the snatch still yet. Uh, we can save that for a little bit better uh, value a little later down the line. Uh, opponent's going to get back their Sinister Serpent, of course. Um, upstart, sure. Uh, Sukuyomi is problematic, of course. Uh, but we do have this Gravekeeper Spy to help out with that. Um, so we're going to lose the Sasuke here. That's fine. Um, go to our turn. We draw a Blade Knight, which obviously isn't good into the Tsukuyomi. Uh, we draw one of. We're just going to set the Spy and pass. Uh, I'm expecting my opponent, especially having not seen, uh, the flips in game two, I'm expecting them to not have No Woman of Cross out in the deck. Um, and the Spy does not get knocked here. Uh, we draw Graceful Charity, which is nice. We actually have this Blade Knight that we don't mind pitching, and this makes our Magician of Faith so much better. Um, accidentally hit shuffle deck there, but going to lead on the graceful charity. It resolves, um, we see brain controls a Borg, which is interesting though. Hmm. This is an interesting discard. I think we can easily get rid of the blade knight here. Um, but the exiled force has a lot of value. The book of moon helps protect against thousand eyes restrict. So if we put down our magician of faith, um, and our opponent summons Thousand Eyes Restrict. They could just take that, but we can protect against that with Book of Moon, whereas uh, we can't otherwise. So I'm kind of thinking, I, I don't remember what I did, um, but just kind of looking back on it, reasoning now, it looks like Blade Knight and Brain Control may be the play, because like I have this Gravekeeper Spy um, that I can sacrifice off for the Zaborg after flipping. I have Magician of Faith that I can sacrifice off for the Zaborg after flipping if my opponent doesn't attack with it. Um, and I don't need to be, like, super cautious with the back row. I don't think my opponent's going to have, like, a Torrential. If they do have a Torrential, I don't think they're going to activate it here. Um, and Mirror Force, if we're just attacking in with, like, the Spies or whatever, um, it's not the end of the world because we get a free Spy. It's not a true uh, plus one for the opponent. But... Yeah, so I, I do discard the Brain Control and the Blade Knight. I uh, think that was correct. Now we flip the Spy. Um, and we sort of have to figure out how we're going to do this. We could summon Exiled Force. Um, that runs into Torrential Tribute. Uh, but pretty much any play other than setting Moth here is going to do that. Um, I am going to Tribute up for Zaborg. So at this point we're thinking... We lose one there, so Torrential is still a minus one, but my opponent does lose their um, their face down monster, and there's a good chance that they wouldn't have set it um, if they had the Torrential Tribute, because I didn't really have a whole lot going on. I, I had one monster already, so if I summon another monster, um, it just makes the Torrential Tribute a little better, so I think we can read that that's not there. Um, so I think this play's fine. Um, it loses out a little bit to Mirror Force here, uh, which is unfortunate, so... Uh, we could, well, we can Book of Moon the Spy, actually, because um, we do have one more in our deck. I believe I cited in all three. Um, I am going to Book of Moon the Spy. That goes through. Uh, we lose the Zaborg, uh, but opponent loses their Mirror Force. We are down a card, but we know one card in our opponent's hand is the Sinister Serpent, so we're kind of even here. Um, we do have this Spy that can flip up again, of course, as well, but opponent... Draws a metamorphosis. I needed to fade that. Sort of one more turn. Um, just so I could get, you know, a little bit of extra value out of the spy. But, uh, yeah. Thousand Eyes Restrict is on the board. Um, 
here, I believe... I make a misplay. I set the Magician of Faith. No, this is, this is fine. I remember something about this play not being okay. That I needed to, um... Exile Force first, but I, I don't... I don't see a problem with this. Oh, it doesn't play around Tsukuyomi. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, my opponent has a face-up Tsukuyomi. I still know about... No? Yeah, I still know about the Tsukuyomi from earlier. Um, so, yeah. So I needed to Exiled Force um, the Thousand Eyes Restrict first before I set the Magician of Faith. So this was a very bad misplay. Um, this Magician of Faith could definitely help me get back into the game with a Graceful Charity, um, or even a Rota here. But, I said it first, um, instead of playing the Exile Force, which just gives my opponent the play, flip up Thousand Eyes, uh, flip Thousand Eyes down, flip it back up, take your Magician of Faith, um, and so I just lose a Magician of Faith for no reason. I do draw a BLS here, which is online, so that's pretty nice. Um, but, I'm just gonna Exile Force... Uh, probably past the turn. Yeah, no reason to throw out the BLS there. Um, this game is still within reach for sure. And draw Ring of Destruction, which is actually a pretty good one uh, to go with the BLS and Snatch Steel. Uh, we can actually get in there pretty quickly now. Uh, setting the Spy. I don't know about setting the Spy either, really. Um... I think we can just attack with it, honestly. There's no reason to, to really set it right. We don't have another spy in the deck. So, Tsukiyomi's going to come down, uh, flip the Magical Merchant down. I decide uh, to let that go. Um, let my opponent have one more thing off of that, and I can actually just Ring of Destruction the Tsukiyomi. I don't know why I do it here either. Um, <laughs> at this point, I, I, I think I was frustrated with myself again. Um and just uh, didn't think that through. We could have gotten an extra 900 points of damage, which is lethal with BLS. Obviously, you know, we know the back row now. The BLS isn't going to get in, but um, yeah. Ringing the Tsukuyomi there is not the play. We should have at least gotten the extra damage. So now I, I summon out the BLS, because um, now I think I'm so far behind that I just need to do something aggressive. Um, we take out the, the magical merchant that's down. We do have this trap dust shoot, which is interesting. Uh, we see a premature burial, a moth, sinister serpent, of course, uh, Sangan, and <laughs> the lightning vortex that we already knew about. Um, so now we're just hoping pretty much that this snatch steel gets us there, but my opponent has their own snatch steel. Um, we take a thousand, our spy is gone, we do have Snatch Steel to take the BLS back, but, I mean, we know our opponent has Lightning Vortex, so. This likely isn't going to get us super far. Um, we do take out their Sangan, draw no woman of Cross out, but then there's also the Sinister Serpent that we have to deal with, um, off of the Call of the Haunted that we know about now. Um, of course, pitch the Sinister Serpent, attack for 16, that's fine. This is not a two-turn clock. We draw King Tiger, which is actually really good here. Um, when you look at it, opponent has Duo, Premature Burial, Lightning Vortex. I guess Lightning Vortex can take it out. Um, but we do get to take out this tribe. They can't activate their scapegoats until they uh, minus one themselves with the, with the Vortex. So Tiger wasn't the worst draw. Uh, Prima, get back the tribe again. Um, kill the King Tiger. Go to 100, we draw Heavy Storm. That's going to be the game. I say GG. I played, played game three very poorly, which, yeah. Um, the uh, the not summoning the Exiled Force the turn that I set them off was a huge misplay. Uh, there definitely could have been a chance that I could have won that game uh, had I just uh, gone ahead and Exiled Force the, the Thousand Eyes Restrict and then set them off on the next turn, but... Uh, again, that's why we do these replays. Um, and, and I did notice it like right after I played it, I looked down, I had on my notes, Sukuyomi written out and I'm like, Oh no, I really, really messed this up. But, um, I get up and walk around a little bit after this, um, decide to put it behind me. Uh, X2 still live for top eight. This is nine rounds of Swiss. 
Um, and I really, you know, even if uh, I don't top eight, I want to um, put together a tournament run that is respectable. Um, not every tournament is going to be a top eight. Sometimes you don't play well. Sometimes you get sacked. Sometimes, you know, that's just how it is. But you do have to learn how to bounce back from these. Uh, and I promise the winning starts soon. <laughs> Uh, this is actually a good tournament showing. So there, there are going to be some wins after these two losses, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, round four was a no show. Um, so we got round four. I will be back, uh, with round five.